How's it going, guys? So we have a difficult question for biochemistry slash path. Consider this path, actually, but I'm not going to rewrite the title of the clip. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, and the HL man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below, and I'll start the clip. How's that for an intro? Okay. Some of you like the old style, old school intros. So... We've got a 24-year-old med student, and they're investigating program cell death, apoptosis, secondary to cell injury. So we're talking about intrinsic apoptosis, meaning the cell decides upon itself that it wants to engage in cell death, whereas extrinsic apoptosis could be something like you have a T cell interacting uh, with the target cell and instructing it to undergo cell death, which is a different mechanism, but we're looking at intrinsic apoptosis here now, which the following is most likely to be seen. Choice A, apoptosone assembly via cytochrome CNA path 1, which is apop uh, apoptotic protease activating factor 1, correct answer. Now, here's the deal, okay? Just relax, relax. This is, we'll make it very clean and easy, okay? What's going to go down is you have a cell and it's going to incur some form of injury. And it'll decide to undergo apoptosis, program cell death. It requires ATP, apoptosis. And you need to know for your assimilia that too long didn't listen, is that cast spaces are the main enzyme that they like. If you're going to forget everything else, I want you to know cast spaces are the major protein slash enzyme involved in apoptosis. Necrosis, in contrast, does not involve ATP and is not programmed cell death. Necrosis is bad, apoptosis oftentimes normal, physiologic, quote-unquote, good. Okay, so this is what's going to go down. The cells are going to undergo injury, and as a result, ATP production is going to decrease. If ATP production decreases, we're going to have decrease channeling, or I should say shuttling of your calcium ions within the cytoplasm. Let me explain. You're not going to be able to channel the calcium into the mitochondria as well as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, you're not going to be able to efflux it from the cell. So calcium is going to build up in the cytosol. And cellular proteins don't like that, including backs and back. They don't like that. So backs and back are going to go to the mitochondria and form pores. That's what backs and back do. It does show up on an NVMe question somewhere. Okay, so I've articulated that shows up doesn't mean high yield, but it shows up. It exists. It's tested. Okay, so calcium builds up in the cell. Backs and back don't like that. They go to the mitochondria and form pores. Now, the mitochondria is going to leak cytochrome C out into the cytosol. You can think of mitochondria as electron transport chain. It's where it occurs, right? You got all those proteins there, coenzyme Q10. You got cytochrome C in there. So... The mitochondria is going to leak that out into the cytosol. There's more mechanisms there. By causing pores in the mitochondria, you're disrupting the proton gradient as well. You stop ATP production in the mitochondria, and that's what can trigger the cytochrome C release. So once cytochrome C is in the cytosol, that's going to complex with APAF1. We now call that the apoptosome. The apoptosome with ATP is now going to recruit caspase 9, and caspase 9 is now going to recruit the execution of caspases, 3 and 7 is literally what they're called. And these caspases are going to induce the cleavage and breakdown of various cellular proteins. Nucleic acids, they cause membrane blebbing, okay, breakdown of the membrane in a controlled fashion, and you get formation of apoptotic bodies, now, which are uh, walled off vesicles, of cellular debris. There's a question floating around one of the NBMEs where they say, like, which of the following would be seen in apoptosis versus necrosis? And even if you didn't know the specifics, the question could not have been more past level. It was something like formation of apoptotic bodies. It's like, well, no kidding. Okay. So that's something that occurs. So we're going to play a little game now. Okay. I'm gonna, we're going to walk through this together. So we said there's cell death. Is calcium in the cytoplasm going to go up or down? As a result, it's going to go up. And what's going to happen when calcium goes up? What's the next step? OK, 
Okay, well, we said backs and back don't like that. Backs and back go where now? They go to the mitochondria, and what are they going to do? They're going to form pores there. And what's going to leak out of the mitochondria now? Cytochrome C. And what's cytochrome C going to complex with? Well, it's APATH1. That's our answer, right? So forming the apoptosome. And then via ATP, what's the apoptosome going to recruit? Caspase 9. And then what's caspase 9 going to help recruit with the apoptosome? Execution of caspase is 3 and 7. Okay, so clearly the other answers are wrong. So backs and back activation of caspase 9, nonsense answer. We said backs and back go to the mitochondria. Set of chromosome activation of caspase is 3 and 7, absurd answer choice, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, release the cytochrome C by damage, rough endoplasmic reticulum, me being an asshole, wrong fucking answer. Clearly it's mitochondria. Recruiting a caspase 9 by caspase is 3 and 7. Another event of me being a malignant asshole because it's flipped, OMG. Okay, so you're going to have caspases 3 and 7 that are recruited by a caspase 9, not the other way around. Wrong fucking answer. 